Hi everyone. Before we start, I would like to ask for some help from all of you. Although this is the second time we've done this, but seeing everyone so energetic, we decided to do this again. Please repeat after me. I say Dinah, you say my. Dinah! My! Dinah! My! I can't hear you! I say Dinah, you say my. Dinah! My! Dinah! My! Thank you so much. This is wonderful. <laughs> We are Great Bay SCIE, pitching our project, Dynamite. Have you ever seen little red creatures clambering, inching, creeping around at the back of your plants? Tiny spiders, you may assume, but no. They're actually part of the Tetranichidae family, uh, scientifically named as Tetranichus urticae, widely known as red spider mites. They host over 800 species of plants, are found in over 27 provinces in China. They have a life cycle of seven days, meaning they produce abundant progenies in an extremely short period of time. Destroying worldwide agriculture and horticulture, red spider mites' plantius progenies spread pervasively, consequently allowing efficient mutation to develop pesticide resistance expeditiously. Various attempts have been developed However, existing solutions contribute to minimal success. Biological controls of natural predatory mites are vulnerable to living conditions and have a low birth rate while clashing with the use of chemical pesticides. With a pollutive nature, chemical approaches consist of potentially threatening substances towards mammals and beneficial insects, while enabling the development of pesticide resistance. Intermittent health risks such as Alzheimer's disease, abnormalities, and neurodegeneration also concerns the public. Traditional treatments of painting tree trunks with lime water or submerging plants in water have proven to be unfitting and ineffectual for various scenarios. But we still have hope. Dynamite, Great Bay SAI's biologically developed powerful pesticide, addresses all aspects of pest infection with a safer, more efficient, and more sustainable solution. Through interacting with multiple groups of stakeholders, we identify our angel users as individual flower lovers. Thus, we specialize our product with less complexity and more palpability, derived from targeting the three stages, pre-infection, mid-infection, and post-infection. Targeting the prevention stage of spider mite infection, we incorporate the terpene 7 ap gibberine, short named 7 ap a terpene with repellent and fecundity reducing properties in TR project. Using E. coli as chassis, we, we constructed an MVA plus zingiberine synthesis pathway for the production of our terpene. The MVA pathway will transform acetyl-CoA A from the carbon source into IPP and DMAPP. Zingiberine synthesis pathway contains the enzymes SLT and PPS, MBAN4662, and DIS, which will collaboratively transform IPP and DMAPP into 7 apz According to the constructed pathway, we built two plasmids and introduced them into E. coli. After fermentation, the product went through GCMS analysis. The result shows a high yield of 740 microgram per liters. The repellency is also tested through a simple bioassay, in which the spider mite is shown to move away from the filter paper containing 7 apz In addition to 7 apz we also incorporate 9 hydroxy zingiberine, showing name 9HC and 9 hydroxy 1011 epoxy zingiberine showing name 9H10 epoxy, which are shown to have better repellent properties. 9HC and 9H10 epoxy are two oxidized products of 7 apz Thus, we incorporate the oxidase SHCPO and two reductases. The enzymes were originally found in eukaryotic cells and immobilized onto the ER. Thus, to express them effectively in the E. coli, we truncated the N-terminus anchor region according to the signal peptide prediction 
and added the SpyTax bycatcher system, which will link the two enzymes together through an isopeptide bond, thus imitating the co-localization of the two enzymes. This will also ensure efficient electron transfer. We then constructed the plasmid and introduced it into E. coli together with PMVA. The product went through GCMS analysis. However, NHC was not detected. Through testing the protein expression, we found out that the oxidase SHCPO cannot be expressed successfully in E. coli. Thus, we switch our chassis to yeast, inserting the DNA fragments of SHCPO and the reductases into the yeast genome through CRISPR-Cas9. Then, we co-cultured E. coli with yeast, eventually producing 9-HC according to the GCMS analysis. Through investigating co-culture, we provide future iGEM teams with a novel fermentation method. In order to eliminate spider mites, we look into the natural antagonist predatory mites, which preys on spider mites. This organism contains a substance called mite venom peptides, in which they are utilized to paralyze and kill their preys by disrupting their neuronal ion channels. We found a study of two mite venom peptides known as MBSP1 and MBSP2 from a polyphagous predatory mite, Neocellus barkeri. However, their effect on spider mites were far from ideal. In order to search for a better eliminating agent, we shift our focus onto Phytocellus persimilis, another predatory mite that preys primarily on spider mites. We integrated persimilis genome using MBSP2 as query and acquired the coding sequence of its homology, PPVP2F, a mite venom peptide. Then we truncated the MVPs to contain only its core venom domain, which then named PPVP2S, and is believed to have improved toxicity and expression efficiency. We likely designed PPVP1F and PPVP1S based on MPSP1 um, coding sequence. And you can see from the video that this is our process. This is how we truncate our mite venom heptide. And this is conducted via alpha fold. Afterwards, by, conducting a, uh, by constructing a phylogenetic tree of MVPs and spider venom peptides with known molecular targets, we infer that our mite venom peptides target the voltage-gated calcium ion channels. And this is later verified by docking analysis of alpha fold also. In order to enhance the contact and oral toxicity of our venom peptides, we incorporated the GNA protein, which protects the protein from proteolytic activities in insect guts. After exploring several expression systems, we discovered that the expression system G1N5 SUMO MVP GNA is the most effective amongst all. The cell lysate is then treated with SUMO protease, and the um, cell lysate is applied onto female tetranicae urticae to test for toxicity. Afterwards, the results reveals extremely high contact lethality for all of my venom peptides, especially PPVP2S, with 100% within 48 hours. In order to target more um, neuronal ion channels to stall drug resistance development, we incorporated spider venom peptides as VPs that target different neuronal ion channels. These three SVPs were expressed using the same expression system, tested their toxicity, and equally obtained high contact lethality with also our CTX for reach 100% within 48 hours. Ultimately, in the future, we hope to secrete our venom peptide into the extracellular region through the secretion system of P. pastoris. And that way, we can reduce production cost and time consumption. Ultimately, we are the first team to obtain three originally characterized mite venom peptide with uh, uh, elucidating its potential to be a safe, specific, potent, and sustainable pesticide against such 
such notorious agricultural pest. And therefore, by this, we believe that the exterminating effect of dynamite is fully established. Thus moves on to our next stage, our last stage of post-infection. In order to allow plants to recover from infection, we incorporated the Harpin protein, which boosts plant immunity and promotes plant growth. The translation initiation region of the uh, TIR region of NI mRNA of the HRP and ORI, which is the originate version of Harpin protein, was optimized, yielding HRPN with a less stable secondary structure of the TIR region. The effect of this uh, optimization is assessed via BCA assay. Afterwards, it shows positive results with correct expression and purification, meaning that our product is fully established. Harnessing numerous integrated human practice activities, dynamite is idealized and implemented to be good and responsible for the world. We classified our journey into five stages, which are assessing the significance, identifying target customers, refining the solution, implementing to the market, and forging a sustainable future. We began our exploration with a public questionnaire, which reflected on the ubiquity of spider mites. Besides, the necessity of our projects is further ensured by Mr. Ching's confirmation of the adverse impact of, pesticides, of chemical pesticides. We then proceeded our, our stage into into um, finding our target customers by interviewing multiple groups of horticulturists and farm owners. Subsequently, we carefully analyzed their demands and devised a target customer's classification chart, recognizing the individual flower lovers as our angel users. We then embarked on the process of refining our solutions. The discussion with Mr. Jing inspired us to successfully construct a plasmid that is approximately 13,000 BP long. Meanwhile, the interview with Professor Glenn King and Professor Elaine Fitches provided valuable insights for protein secretion and chassis selection. We then reached out to Professor Huang, who specializes in bioassay. Um, following his advice, we created a bioassay protocol and achieved promising results during our in vivo experiments on T. Erdesay. We then set our foot on the commercialization of dynamite. We interview our most significant customer, individual flower lovers, again to obtain our final project design. We then explore the process of pesticide registration, company establishment, and partnership exploration, saturating the contents of our product development plan, and ensure our future implementation. Last but not least, with the significance of environmental preservation realized at a relatively early stage of our work. We wish to ultimately leverage the influence of our company to contribute to universal sustainable development. By interviewing multiple business experts and collaborating with sustainable packaging companies, we enhance our understandings of SDGs and eventually engage in advocating them. Leveraging IHP investigations, we were exposed to a vast range of potential customers who valued very properties of pesticide, including high safety level, orderless, and effectiveness. However, existing products in the market failed to meet all needs of the customers, providing a significant opportunities for us to enter the market and fulfill these expectations. Hence, we began our exploration of entrepreneurship activities. By conducting various thorough research, we secure the feasibility of commercialization. To maintain our competitiveness, we have submitted application for the patents of SVP and MVP, which has already been received by China National Intellectual Property Administration. Under the help of specialists, we calculated the production cost, ever taking into transportation, packaging, advertisement, and human resources into consideration, we have a profit margin of 49.1%, stated that we are likely to enjoy a considerable profitability. Then, we embarked it on a detailed project development plan. We intended to commence with iGEM, followed by a three-year period of company setup, including company registration and pesticide registration. 
In order to conduct this process successfully, we had a conversation with an institute of the control of agricultural chemicals, thus created a protocol for pesticide registration, which assists further applications. Subsequently, we will scale up and enter small-scale production. From 2029 onwards, our emphasis will shift to third-party sales and overseas market registration. In long-term prospect, we wish to ultimately promote sustainability of agriculture and foster safety of pesticide. So we consider both right, positive long-term impact and negative All right, guys, we are up for time. I have to do this. But let's give them all a big round of applause. You guys did great. Thank you so much. You can exit up here. And we will definitely, at least I will definitely be thinking, dynamite.